Well, hello, YouTube. Captain Dave here in the Wolf Den doing a little sharpening video for you. I just got this Boker Plus Jim Wagner. He was this guy, like this fighting, knife fighting guy or something for uh, like self-defense or something. And Boker did a little collaboration with him, I guess. And this is the knife here. It's your standard looking Boker. It's got this recurve blade and it has a ton of billboarding right here, which I don't want to take it out of the vise just yet. Now, here's the issue that I have. Number one, the thing came dull as a butter knife. I mean, it would cut, but it wasn't, it wasn't sharp. And it's, you could not tell it's a button lock. You got a button right here, right? Right there, you got a button and then it locks. And like so many other bokers that are like this, and it's aluminum handled and it's got this, you know, like get out of my way, little thumper on the other end here. And it came with a glass breaker but like glass is not going to break with that textured finger grooves. That's what I liked. It has this cool recurve blade, but I know some of them came and they were autos where you push the button and it autoed open. And I was praying this one was going to be because this was a, make an offer so i made an offer and i got it about 20 dollars cheaper than the guy was asking AUSA black blade me and the black blades i love the black blades because by the time i put a mirror finish on this or even just a working edge it really stands out as you can see i'm having to practically reprofile this knife it came with 24 degrees on each side. And I'm using the 100 and 200 grit right now and scrubbing this side. And I'm trying to get a burr over on this side because then I will go over here and I have found my apex. So I'm trying to get it to be more slicey at 20 degrees, but you know, when it came, I was like opening the box going, please let it be an auto, a button auto. And it wasn't, it wasn't like the, the auto Kalashnikovs from Boker, the, what are the other ones? The Boker strike. I was hoping it was going to be, but there still may be hope on the horizon to turn this into a auto knife. You push the button and the blade comes out because I was looking on blade ops, uh, websites, knife store in Utah. I've made several orders from them and I'll be showing you that later because I don't have the whole scheme of things here yet. They're coming. They're coming. So, on blade ops, they sell springs. So I sent him an email and I said, Hey, this Boker Jim Wagner fighting knife thing. And I sent him a picture. Do any of your springs fit? So if they do, I'm going to show you how I'm going to turn this into an auto deploy button push auto deploy knife. I'll show you what I've been doing here. I've been sitting here with the 100 grit and I've been scrubbing to get a burr on the other side just like this so 
So that's what I've been doing. And I'm taking it from 24 degrees on each side to 20 degrees. It's a 20 degree knife. It should be a 20 degree. So it is mighty nice to be able to get a knife and then be able to, let me switch you over here, to instantly go ahead and reprofile it if I want. I'll show it to you as I progress here, but it's a really nice knife, really nice. And I believe it could be much nicer if I can turn it into an auto. And I'll show you what it's like towards the end here because this thing wouldn't even cut, wouldn't even cut magazine paper. On the Wicked Edge, I can come right here and select 20 degrees. I can back it up with my angle cube by testing the angle. So this Wicked Edge Gen 3 Pro is one bad mamma jammer. All right, well, I finally, I drew a burr over the entire blade on this side. But now I'm going to scrub and get the burr to lay over on this side. This is reprofiling. There's a lot of steel flying. I got my burr, so I'm coming off of 100. I'm going to go to 200. You know, it doesn't matter what sharpener you're using. If you're using the Work Sharp uh, Precision Sharpener, the one I did a video on, that was the sharpener for anybody. Anybody could use it. You're going to want to do the exact same thing. And I can tell that I need to get more of a burr going down here. Already getting sharp, but not right here. And it's because of that recurve blade. So I'm going to do a little more rubbing and trying to draw that burr up. I think I said this before. Do not get any wicked edge if you're suffering from OCD. If you're obsessive compulsive disorder, because I now, with this machine, I am never satisfied. I get a blade like this brand new knife. I mean, this knife is an hour old in my possession. I feel it. I'm like, ah, that doesn't cut the mustard. That does not cut it. So even this recurve, it's a slight recurve. It's not a heavy recurve blade, but... I am not satisfied. So it's one of those things that I should tape this, keep any dust out of here. That's, better. That's all you got to do is keep the dust out of your pivot and all that. So one thing that is definite, when you have the wicked edge, you are, you're never going to be satisfied until you're satisfied. And it literally feeds obsessive compulsive disorder. <laughs> so I'm at 200 right now. And you can feel that the 200 has smoothed it out. Once you get there, you can feel the stones not biting as hard. But, I mean, the damn thing is sharp right now, and it's only 200 grit. One thing you have to watch, though. It's easy to sit here and just swipe motions out here on the middle of the blade or the end of the blade. But to, you want to make sure you get up here by the handle. Because you want it... You want it as equally sharp on the entire blade, right? All right. Well, I'm going to continue. Do you realize I got my phone sitting right here? I've only been at this for about an hour. 
maybe a little more than an hour. But I have pre-profiled an AUS-8 blade. I'm all the way worked through all my grits, 100, what did I start at? Yeah, I probably started at 100 all the way through to like 3,000. I used my ceramic, my uh, coarse and fine ceramic, and now I've got just cowhide uh, strops. I'm going to back off basically at least a degree here, and I am going to hit it with the coarse and fine strops now. I'm backing off the angle now. I'm going in because the softer leather can fold over and you can literally over strop. Now these strops have what two micron spray on them, diamond spray. I'm not going to do too much because I've already, with my lapping film, went to 0 0.3 micron, which is 6,000 grit. And now, it's because I kind of forgot about my cowhide here. So I'm not going to do too much with this. But what I'm doing is I'm getting all this, trying to get all the scratch patterns out. I can honestly say the recurve blade I've never done before. A bit different and a little, a little challenging. The deal is, is you really have to pay attention to this down here near the handle. You really have to pay attention. Or at least to me, it seems very important to pay attention. Basically everything above maybe 800 grit is you're into polishing. So, i just looking at the edge. Well, let me finish up here one more time. I'm going to show you. Stick with me because I'm going to show you what this looks like at the end. All right. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not, but there is one of my white beard hairs. And I'm going to see if this is whittling sharp or just hair cutting sharp. So I got the GoPro about as close to it as I could do. So let's see. Oh yeah. Look at that. Can you see? It whittled that piece right off. There's an, again, if you can see it up against there. Oh yeah, it's just whittling the hell out of it. Look at that. There you go, up against the black. It's whittling sharp. Hair whittling sharp. Alrighty, here's the blade. It is this Boker Jim Wagner reality-based blade. Well, reality-based... Good God, I don't know what that means, but I can tell you one thing. Lynn Thompson already came up with that. <laughs> Lynn Thompson of Cold Steel. Every one of his blades is damn near reality-based. So uh, this is a Boker Plus. I'll give you a look at it. That's... I don't know what this is. It might be aluminum. I'm thinking it's aluminum. And it's a push button that I want to, of course, I'd like to make it into an auto, but it's locked right now. And you push the button and you shut it. And now you can't open the blade. I don't know what this little doohickey is here. But... It's got this thing. Oh, they call that the, the ballpoint pen uh, end. And they gave you like a little nub one that was a glass breaker. I changed it out already. You can adjust the tension. Let me do that. Let me show you 
all the little Gigi gadgets that came with this. Well, here's the glass breaker part. I figure that's for glass, that's for humans. If somebody goes, if you, if you got this, you know, in the back, in the head, that's, that's serious reality right there when you get hit with that little point. And they gave me, you got a tool with it. This little tool, little spanner for undoing the pivot and the glass breaker thing here. You stick it in there and you unloosen it and you can move the pocket clip in and out. Make it a little looser. So you can push it in. See that? You can push it in, make it really tight, or you can pull it out and make it looser. Boker, I was warned about Boker. Oralwalk, my fellow knife enthusiast, number one contributor on my YouTube channel, warned me long time ago about Boker. They make some really fantastic stuff for the price. This is a Taiwanese knife, of course. It's not a USA knife. These are a few things here that I've never seen. I have not seen a little spanner wrench like this. I'm really becoming, if I'm going to do Taiwanese knives whatsoever, which of course Cold Steel is Taiwanese and Boker German, you know, and they build certain knives over there in Germany. And then they build certain ones in China. And then they build certain ones in Taiwan. This one, made in Taiwan. I really, really like this thing. It's not huge, but I'd love it to be an auto. There it says eight, AUS 8. If this was a fighting knife, I'd think you'd want it to come out a whole lot faster. Super. This is my kind of jimping. When I um, did my cold steel uh, pocket Bushman modifications, I sometimes put jimping so radical on the top that for my fingers, which are pretty, you know, I consider my hands pretty damn tough, I used to put jimping up on the top that would take your skin off, but that's okay with me. Blades, relatively tight. I'm sure it could be a little tighter. Now, this is something that I wondered. Look how kind of cheesy that is done. And you know what that is? That's where it goes in and hits the backstop here kind of thing. So I push the button. And there's that cheesy looking grind right there. And it hits that pin goes past that pin and then goes to the next pin and that's the button lock. And it sits in that little groove. Look at that groove. I mean, it looks like they went, Zip! hit it with a Dremel. It seems to work fine. I don't think I'll be doing any reality-based knife fighting. I'll go get my 12 gauge before I do that. <laughs> but... Wouldn't this be nice if it was an auto? I'm going to see if I can make it that. And if I can, of course, I'll do a video of it. But we still have to do the... Oh, God. Look, it's just popping the hairs right off. Oh, my God. Yes. Now, let's do the reflective test. I like this coating. Coating is very, very nice. All right, here's the numbers on my Wicked Edge. I could have spent a little more time with it. And yes, 
I can see those numbers in the edge of the blade. I hope you can, because I can see them. There you go. You can see the 6 and the 16 right there. So that's called mirrored edge. Pretty nice knife. I don't think you're going to want to move your finger up here. But I would say this is on par as far as wickedness and build quality and everything as a cold steel. So, thanks for watching the Boker Jim Wagner Reality Based Knife.